Welcome back, everyone. We are speaking with Luxfolio Holdings, Inc. They trade on the OTCQB under the symbol LUXXF and on the CSE under the symbol LUXX and operates an industrial scale cryptocurrency mining facility in the United States powered primarily by renewable energy, with a focus on the blockchain ecosystem and generation of digital assets. So attendees, please submit your questions for Luxfolio through this webinar module, and let's welcome its CEO, Dean Linden. Welcome, Dean. Uh, thanks for having me to th this morning. Glad to be here. All right. We look forward to your presentation. Take it away. Thank thanks so much. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, uh, thanks for taking the time to, uh, to, uh, to hear our story today. Uh, Luxfolio Holdings. Um, obviously, we're going to have some forward-looking statements here, and I'll I invite you to read that at your leisure. Um, so, the background of Luxfolio, I think it's it's important because it really sort of will inform you as to what our strategy is and kind of how we approach this business. Um, Lux began as an idea back in 2017. Um, at the time. And currently, um, the chairman of Luxfolio and myself, we had started a, a company called um, Cypress Hills Partners. And Cypress Hills Partners was a private credit, private debt fund. And it was really looking at the time, it, was, it became very interested in blockchain technology and how we could use blockchain technology to um, unlock the uh, the investment potential for institutions of the collectible market. So we're talking about sort of those outsized in, um, uh, uh, returns that that collectors had been getting for years in, you know, fine art and uh, sports memorabilia and sneakers and all those types of things. And we, we were kind of working on that on that theory. We spent some money and some time, and we successfully built a platform on which to um, give uh, uh, asset authentication and verification and provenance on the blockchain. Of course, now we know these things to be NFTs, but in 2017, we were we were way, way, way ahead of our time, and it wasn't something that we believed that, that the market was ready for. Um, in early 2020, we were approached by um, uh, uh, a company called Arctos Capital, which has since been bought by NIDIG. And their, their proposition to us at the time was, was, would you be interested as a private credit fund um, in working with us on some of these larger uh, equipment uh, uh, financing in the Bitcoin mining space? So, so in early 2020, that was really our first exposure to, to, to Bitcoin. And you know we underwrote it just like we would underwrite any other deals, but we were we were really impressed with with the or we were, we were very comfortable with the risk and very impressed with the return. And so we were you know we we got very familiar with lending into the space um, uh, and continue to be um, comfortable lending into the space. And, and I think that really informs kind of where we're coming at this from when it comes to Luxfolio, we are, we are looking at it through the eyes of a lender. So, um, you know, so that's, that's kind of a, a an important distinction. So in and around, uh, so by December of 2020, now we're, we're sort of thinking, geez, we're sitting there with, with Lux that's kind of, idled it's sort of sitting there waiting for 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 some direction our, our nft strategy or what has become an nft strategy is was is we were obviously ahead of our time why don't we take uh the expertise that we've got in lending into the space and why don't we buy uh our own miners and vend those in, in into luxfolio that's making us a a bitcoin miner so we were we we actually took possession we made that order in december of 2020 um uh, receive those in June. We actually mined our own, uh, our first Bitcoin in uh, in in July of, uh, of 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 this year. Uh, in May, we we placed an order for an additional 2,400 miners. Uh, the delivery of those are going to be spread out between now and and mid 2022, sort of setting us up for some significant uh, growth. We're currently running about 1,300 miners. Um, you know, it wasn't long after we, we we made the acquisition or we made the 
the the move on the miners that our board was very concerned at the time that we wanted to be in control of our own destiny. We wanted to be able to move, um, uh, make moves without worrying about where we're going to plug these machines in. So again, we we reached out to our friends um, at NIDIG and we were able to sort of shop around at the time. There was a lot of private companies that had that had uh, businesses that were started in 27, uh, 2017 or 2016 with sort of the first uptick in in uh, in, in Bitcoin prices. And you know, we got, had a chance to interview a lot of these guys and far and away the most sophisticated group that we found both from the facility that they'd built and also from the management that they had uh, was uh, was West Block. Um, uh, and and so we were we were able to um, uh, work with West Block. We got very comfortable with with uh, um, with that setup, and we're very impressed with the relationships that they have had with the uh, Navajo Utility Corp. And uh, uh, we'll get into the uh, into that a little bit more in a minute. Um, so uh, in August of 2021. Uh, you'll recall that there was a there was an adjustment in the price in the in the price of Bitcoin. Um, China had unplugged. There's suddenly a glut of of miners on the market, and we were able to go back to our 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 supplier and and exercise a price protection that we had, giving us uh, um, a rebate of about a million dollars, which we then turned around and, and plowed right back into new miners. So you can see that we've got sort of this track record of 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 being very, very shrewd or very, um, uh, very aware of the of, of 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 financing these things and whatnot. So, so we've been we've done a nice job there. Um, uh, so here's just a look at you know I I made mention of of uh, of our 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 two divisions, um, sort of the NFT asset management side of the business and also the mining part of the business. I think that moving forward, you know, the reason to buy the stock today is obviously what, you know, the action that we're, 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 uh, we're getting on the, on the, on the mining. Um, but I, I think that there's in the, in the future, there's going to be some real opportunities with the digital assets and analytics division. We are, um, we're, we're working very hard on building out solutions with the eye on, on being able to securitize a lot of our assets in order to lower our lost cost of capital, among other things. So, as I said, we began active mining in July of 2021. Um, our New Mexico facility is currently wired for, for eight megawatts. We're, 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 we've got an expansion underway to 15 megawatts. Um, that's going to be that's going to be up and running. It's going to give us a capacity of 445 petahash. Um, uh, at the end of October, we're running about 1,300 machines um, and uh, and a rate of 2,300 pet, or sorry 123 petahash. Um, uh, based on our current level, we're um, uh, uh, we're at 14 bitcoins, and then by uh, by uh, by the end of the last month, we're at 20. To 24, 22 to 24 bitcoins per month. So, um, as you can see, that that and with the new machines coming online between now and 2022, we're going to have uh, um, consistent, steady, uh, significant growth. Here's here's a look at our hash rate as it currently stands. Um, all of the you know this entire graph that you see here. This is you know the, the power is is accounted for. The machines are ordered and financed. Um, so this is very much our 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 base case um, um, hash rate growth. That red line up there sort of includes uh, the expansion and 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 uh, that we have available to us the you know the megawatts that we would have available to us. So um, lots of room to room to run here for a while. So I, I I mention a lot that we sort of look at this through the eyes of a lender. So I think that you'll you'll see when we. When we do our projections, we're we're always quite conservative, um, you know, as we would be if we were underwriting this ourselves with our own money. And um, and uh, so our projections include, uh, you know, fifty thousand dollar Bitcoin, um, uh, a 05 percent uh, monthly price increase, a three percent monthly difficulty increase, and uh, and a ten percent 
difficulty increase right off the hop, which, you know, I think that, you know, these things, um, with the exception of the price, may not be as conservative as they might have been, we might have thought they were even two weeks ago. So um, uh, with, the, with the price, obviously, become, it comes, uh, comes difficulty. But you can see um, our, uh, our contribution margin is extremely strong across the board and uh and uh you know we think that we can uh with the with the advance in hash rate uh you know the machines coming on the immersion technology that we invested in um and will be uh be arriving in early 2022 all of these things are are you know sort of uh, uh help with our, our our base case our management um i i think that as I mentioned before, when we first met the guys at West Block, it was a real, um, very refreshing. They were, they were, um, you know, they had, they had sort of built West Block from the ground up, a real grassroots organization. Uh, I, I think both Ian and uh, Ken McLean, our president, would would say that you know they were able to uh, make a lot of mistakes as they built out um, the original facility. And uh, and 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 we're really benefiting from from the efforts that they put in and the lessons that they learned as a result of making those mistakes. So we've got a very seasoned management group on uh, uh, on uh, on that side. Our board is again, you know, you can you can read up on these guys, but I think that they're 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 a group of uh, sophisticated financial people. Uh, and they offset the uh, the chops that we've got on the technical side on our management team. So we've got, I think that we've got a very, very strong uh, collective uh, management group. You know, I, I think one of the reasons I'm doing this conference today is 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 in, a, in maybe the most important thing that I would like to 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 leave with the audience is that you know we have a we have a um, uh, a very we represent a lot of value to investors with uh, here. I think that you know when you compare us to some of the other other uh, uh, companies, our peers, we are you know by almost every standard we're we're, we're significantly undervalued, and um, and you know we're obviously looking to close that gap in the not too distant future here. And and one of the and you know what our, our strategy is to. You know, is to is to grow our megawatts significantly, and I think that we've got. A, I, I hope I've made a pretty good case of how we're we're going to do that up until now. But one of the things that is exciting for us is, you know, as we as as we're you know expanding from you know seven megawatts to fifteen, and then on to thirty, you know, above thirty megawatts, uh, we've got a real opportunity to. Um, uh, to enjoy some multiple expansion. So if you you know if you look at the space right now, uh, you know small small cap is you know small cap companies they're they're sort of looking at about you know uh, three to four million dollars per per megawatt. Um, uh, large cap miners enjoy much much bigger um, uh, uh, multiples, um, you know, coming in around forty one million dollars per megawatt. So it's it's important for us as we continue to expand to be mindful of that. And 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 sort of hit that target because we believe that is our that is our path to being a billion dollar billion dollar company. Um, so we're 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 15 megawatts in New Mexico uh, currently, uh, eight megawatts. Uh, we've got inexpensive and flexible power. We're you know we're top you know top uh, top 10 percent in terms of in terms of uh, in terms of price of power, uh, and we're green, and we're getting greener. I think when we first did the did the deal with um, uh, with West Block, we were about forty percent renewables, and since that time, um, with the you know with the closure of some of some um, uh, uh, fossil fuel um, or coal uh, um, plants, we're, we're now we're now at sixty percent renewable. So, and and you know we've got plans to incorporate an additional. Um, uh, solar project, which uh, should only drive that uh, that uh, percentage of renewable power even uh, e even higher. So, the, specifically, the New Mexico facility, we've got you know custom built buildings on one and a half acres adjacent to a power station. Um, 
fiber optic internet service. It's interesting. It's high desert, so it's so it's uh, so it's a cool climate. It's very little humidity. Um, ideal for for um, for for Bitcoin mining, uh, and obviously with the addition this morning of uh, of the immersion technology, that's gonna that's gonna really. Um, optimize that facility as well as you know as we roll out additional facilities. Uh, financing wise, I think that you know I mentioned Nidig and Cypress Hills. Those those are um, very valuable partners for us. It's allowed us to grow this company uh, significantly over the past year while only um, issuing. I think we've got less than sixty million shares outstanding. So that's that is you know we've we've been able to utilize some debt facilities that both companies have have extended us in a in a in a very um, very good way and i think that's going to that's you know that will be a theme that we'll continue to uh, to exploit um, like i said 59 uh, 59 million shares outstanding uh, 3 million stock options uh, purchase warrants at uh, at uh, um, 11 million 7, 755 and a market capital uh, capitalization of of uh, about 63 million as of today. So um, that's uh, that's our story. Uh, happy to take any questions. Great, thank you, Dean. Okay, we do have some questions for you. Calvin Ryback wants to know, uh, well, first he says, I love the team and the company. So there oh, you go. Wow. And thank his you. question is only 1,150 miners of what's been ordered will be a part of the cooling system in general? That's his question. Or will future orders also be used with the immersion cooling process? Yeah, I, I think I think as time goes on, I, I think the you know efficiency is key, and I think that we will continue to uh, uh, to use immersion cooling. But at this point in time, um, it was it was prudent for us to you know to order enough equipment to to submerse uh, a little over eleven 1, hundred machines. But that th that will be something that we will continue to roll out. I, I think it's important to note that a company our size, we can be very nimble. Um, and uh, but I think that you know as the I, I think the immersion cooling is is the future and we're going to continue to sort of uh, utilize that um, uh, uh, very aggressively. Great, uh, Ellie Edwards asks, what's the cost of mining a coin, and do you see hmm. the cost increasing or decreasing over time? Wow. Uh, so we produce. We're a low cost producer. I think that you know, if you know, with overhead and everything, and debt service, and all the things that we do, we we are we're mining a Bitcoin for a, a little less than thirteen thousand dollars. So, um, and if you take that out and just our 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 hard costs, it's you know, it's around it's uh, it's around seven thousand dollars. I see um, the cost of of mining a Bitcoin um, going up. I don't think there's any any question. I think there's, um, and that's why it's very important that all companies um, are are utilizing the latest technology and whatnot. So so that's you know that's in keeping with what we did this morning. The you know the immersion is 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 certainly part of that. So um, yeah, great. Gary Quinn wants to know how many different coins are you planning to mine over the next twelve months. I'm assuming that when he says different coins, where he's talking about diversifying um, uh, in, into other altcoins and whatnot, I, you know, I we're we're currently looking very very hard at a number of opportunities. Um, it's probably a little premature for me to talk about you know how many that might be. I think we, you know, the one thing about about Bitcoin mining is it's 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 sort of the gold standard, and it's believe it or not, kind of the least risky coin uh, but it's capital intensive and I think that we're looking at opportunities in the space that would make us um, uh, you know you can you can become a very significant player with a relatively low capex to get into it and I think that you know we're going to um, vigilantly uh, explore a lot of those opportunities and and hopefully you'll be hearing from us soon on, on things like that right. We love updates. Um, Cam Morris wants to know, is your company more infrastructure or mining? And what percentage of revenue comes from each? Oh, I, I, all of our revenue comes from mining. No question about it at this, at this point in time. I think that, I think that the, um, the uh, um, 
the asset management part of it really would allow us to be creative on our cost of capital and we can do some things on on that side so yeah 100 percent of our revenue comes from, from comes from mining right now anna watts wants to know what states are you currently mining in and which give you the best electric costs oh we're uh we're exclusively in in uh in new mexico at the current time we've got we've got a um uh a number of opportunities that we're that we're looking at that would take us sort of you know outside of the state, but we're we're 100% um, in in New Mexico right now, and uh, our cost per kilowatt hour is uh, is is four cents. Okay. And Ellie Edwards wants you to talk more about your cooling systems you just announced, and will that help the cost of mining? Yeah, I think that you know um, immersion technology is. You know, I, I think we're looking for sort of a minimum efficiency improvement of about 25 percent. Um, and, you know, as we get better at it, I think, or, you know, be, continue to optimize it, uh, we could enjoy up to up to a 50 percent improvement in in efficiency. The immersion really keeps that, you know, keep whether it's you know, whether it's 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 the winter or summer. It, you know, it keeps your machines at the exact same temperature all the time, and it re they really like that. Uh, um, you know, there's no fluctuations in temperature, and so I think that, yeah, immersion's a big deal, and I think that you're going to hear a lot more about immersion from ourselves and and others as uh, as this continues to roll out. Great, um, Jason Strickland wants to know if you've ever looked into acquiring other miners. Oh my goodness, uh, you know what there is. There is a lot of of private miners out there. I, I would say that I probably field a call every week from from you know miners that are looking to uh, to go public. I think it's 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 very important for people to understand that this is um, you know we're fortunate. We've got access to we've got access to the public equity markets. We got access to debt. So for us to sort of make a move into something like you know immersion, we can do that. But when you're sitting there as a private group, um, that money becomes pretty pr pretty scarce. So there are opportunities out there to uh, to acquire um, uh, private miners, and 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 we're looking at those opportunities all the time. Great. And uh, Frank McDonald wants to know if the technology in your space is changing and is it costly to keep up with? You know, it, it, it absolutely is. I mean, the whole, this is, um, this business is so dynamic and it's so new that I think it is, um, the, you know, the technology is always changing. I, I think that it's, it's, when we first looked at, at, at Bitcoin mining back in early 2020, one of the concerns that we had was, you know, the your, you know, the the, the size of the chips make your make your technology, um, uh, you know, outdated very very quickly. I think that curve's kind of flattened out a little bit, but with, uh, but again, you know, I'm going to talk about immersion again. Things like immersion, things like you know, running the the most up to date machines. Um, uh, the uh, the facilities that you run and make sure that you're optimizing your airflow if you're not using immersion. We we have got um, uh, our electrical engineers and and uh, and and software engineers. They've been they've been you know at this you know since some of them since 2010. So you know we've got the best team to make sure that our technology is is cutting edge. So yeah, it is changing. No question about it. Chuck Durham wants to know what's the biggest hurdle when it comes to mining in terms of maintaining a profitable cost of production. Well, again, it's 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 keeping your, you know, keeping your technology current and 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 cutting edge. I think that um, you know, the the di the difficulty rate, you know, as as the as the price of of Bitcoin goes up, there's going to be more people plugging in. And uh, and that increases the difficulty rate. So if you're not if if you're not always optimizing your 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 technology, you are go that's going to begin to grind your uh, your your profits. So so you know that's just very important to not um, 
you, you can't rest on your laurels. You can't sit tight. You got to you got to keep investing in your technology to stay ahead of it. Right on. Um, Tom Webb asks, how do you account for what you mine? Do you sell immediately? And if you do, is it considered a short term capital gain? Wow, that's a, that's an accounting. Uh, uh, the, the, the taxation on that, I can't say I, I can't say for sure. Um, sorry about that. However, we we are, you know, ideally you want to be able to, um, uh, you know, trade your equity for for miners in Bitcoin. And I think that's that's ideally what, you know, what we'd like to do. Um, we do currently uh, sell some Bitcoin in order to in order to in order to pay our uh, our our obligations. But as time goes on, we think that we're going to be able to um, uh, hold as much Bitcoin as possible. And Frank Wu wants to ask, what's your game plan beyond July 22, 2022? Uh, well, that's a good question. We've got we've got a number of projects that we're looking at power projects. Um, I, I think you know ultimately, you know we have a we have a path to be a billion dollar Bitcoin miner. Um, uh, but I think, as I'd mentioned before, there is so many opportunities in some of these other other coins. I would you know I'm very interested in the opportunity to diversify. Um, uh, Luxfolio into you know in, into other coins, um, but I think that you know what we've got you know what I can talk about today is is you know getting this thing to uh, you know 30, 35 megawatts um, and uh, and you know achieving some you know billion dollar valuation and uh, and 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 have a diversified portfolio of, uh, of digital assets that we can that we can boast. Last question, you can close with this. Um, it's from Brian Fisher. What's the end game for the company? Is there a potential buyout, takeover? Do you create an exchange? What's the plan for the future? Well, I, you know, I think that's the, that's the really exciting part about Luxfolio. Because our, our DNA is rooted in, in, in lending, um, I think the, you know, if, we have a, if we have a war chest of, of, of Bitcoin and other digital assets, with the you know with a with a you know with access to people that are very very uh, very adept at putting together structured products and all kinds of decentralized finance um, opportunities, um, you know I, I think there's I, I think there is a lot of of evolution that's going to take place and it's the, the the world is so dynamic right now I think that it would be. I would be a little disingenuous if I answered that with any absolute certainty. I think that um, uh, there are um, a lot of opportunities that we're currently looking at, both in you know in 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 the in the Bitcoin mining space as well as in the DeFi world, and um, and you know we just want to make sure that our our uh, we're sensitive to the things that are moving around us and uh, and uh, and moving appropriately. Wonderful. Thank you, Dean. We have lots more questions for you, but we are out of time, so we'll send them directly to you. But we certainly hope you come back with some future updates. Thanks so much. All right. Well, everyone, thank you so much for having uh, such a great 20th Emerging Growth Conference with us. Um, it's been a delightful day. So in just a minute, you're going to be redirected to the registration page for our next conference. So please stay on to reserve your spot early. So on behalf of all of us at Emerging Growth, thank you to all of our presenters and our attendees for making this Emerging Growth Conference such a great success. Remember that a complete replay of this conference, separated by company, will be made available on the Emerging Growth Conference YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash Emerging Growth Conference. So please subscribe there. And follow us on Twitter at Emerging Growth C. We post all our new information on Twitter first. So I'm Anna Berry, and on behalf of myself and our whole team who made this event possible today, we wish you a great day, and we welcome you back on the 8th of December. We're going to take a little Thanksgiving break. So if you are in the U.S., even though this is an international conference, if you are in the U.S., happy Thanksgiving. We'll see you back on December 8th. Thank you all for joining us, and have a great week.